Join us for a new session on VMware App Volumes 3 and how App Volumes can help your customers instantly deploy new applications to desktops. Stay tuned. Welcome to today's session on VMware App Volumes 3. My name is Travis Lawrence, Systems Engineer with Aero ECS. So today's session, as I mentioned, is on App Volumes 3, and we'll dig a little bit more into that and what the details of the new release are. But really, at a high level, App Volumes allows us to instantly deploy applications to virtual desktops. So think of scenarios where you may have a, a Horizon infrastructure or virtual desktops and want to instantly deploy those applications to users. So really the use cases for this are for customers that, that have issues with their desktop teams taking a lot of time to de deploy those applications. So you think of scenarios where we have physical desktops, maybe in old days we have to use media or a network share to actually manually install an application. Maybe over time they get a little bit more advanced and use a scripted installation or some type of imaging technology. But with, with the power of virtual desktops, we want to be able to actually build what we call just-in-time desktops. So being able to instantly build not only the OS layer using something like VMware Horizon, but also to bring those applications in as needed. So maybe a finance group needs different applications. Uh, than the development group or, or what have you and, and allows the IT department to dynamically do that. So App Volumes really allows us to do that and some of the new features in this release uh, as you'll see I think will help that along as well. Things like App Toggle. So if we've created a, an application stack or an app stack as VMware terms it, um, maybe we don't want to deploy all those applications to finance. We want to be able to click off a few of those applications and not have to rebuild that entire app stack. Um, or App Capture. Capture existing applications without, without having to go through uh, a capture process for each new application that kind of is already out there in the wild. So Kevin Grote, our technical partner manager from VMware, will detail all that and go through some of uh, the common scenarios. And I think this is a good session for those of you who are either really technical or really need just an introduction to App Volumes and App Volumes 3 specifically and, and what the features there. Um, really are. So again, uh, from a distributions perspective, the way we're seeing this used is, is great with Horizon 7, trying to build those, those desktops dynamically. And think of this as a scenario where you may have an issue with a user desktop. If we have a virtual desktop, now we're able to actually rebuild an entire desktop in seconds from the OS layer now up to the application layer, and we don't have to spend as much time troubleshooting specific issues maybe with a Windows installation or an application installation. So that, that really is the value you'll see here. So Thanks for joining us today. Uh, stay tuned at the end of the session for more information on how you can contact us at Arrow and our, our VMware team. So thanks for joining us and I will pass it on to Kevin. Hello and welcome to today's session. As always, I'm your host, Kevin Grote, Staff Systems Engineer here at VMware. Today, we're going to be continuing our conversations around end user compute and we're gonna talk about App Volumes 3. Now, App Volumes, was introduced with thunderous applause at VMworld when during the mother of all demos, they demonstrated that we could deploy thousands of applications to desktops in an instant. Now, inside of App Volumes 3, we're taking that vision even further inside of the space of creating end user computing visions that are both consumer simple and enterprise secure and bringing them together as one especially as it's a part of the Workspace One offering. In App Volumes 3, we continue the advancements of application delivery, which are so tantamount to the success of your end user computing deployments with things like selectivity and more policy-based automation and awareness. So without any further ado, let's double click and learn more about all we can do with App Volumes 3. So let's go ahead and double click in to App Volumes 3.0. Now, App Volumes 3.0 is a major release for us. And App Volumes 3.0 is bringing a bunch of really cool new features. And it's important to remember that as we're looking at App Volumes, we're not just looking at application delivery. We're looking at an integral component to things like well, Workspace ONE. And if you look here in the rest of the playlists on this page, you'll also see information about things like Workspace ONE and other forms of application delivery. So App Volumes 3.0 
is about unifying and making app delivery as simple as possible because you see now it's we're not just delivering to one desktop at a time. With instant cloning, previously VM fork, we could be provisioning to thousands of virtual machines at any given time. So if you're talking about delivering hundreds of applications to thousands of different machines, that number is going to grow really big really fast. So app volumes is about streamlining that. In the past, managing applications and users has been exceptionally difficult simply because we're deploying apps one off every time. Why you might have applications that are sitting inside of the user's desktop. There might be applications that are sitting inside of the infrastructure itself. There may even be applications that are living out inside of cloud. And then lastly, you could even have applications that are inside of the infrastructure, but maybe inside of legacy formats or other formats, maybe even ZenApp or something like that. So between SaaS, on-prem, local installs, managing those applications just became a huge headache. And it was very, very slow and very painful to try to install them. And we never see the same thing happen twice. And at the end of the day, it would always cost a lot of money to make it happen. So inside of the real-time application model, we're talking about moving away from just those onesie twosie applications to being able to deploy applications holistically right to the desktop and to be able to deploy them seamlessly to the user where the user just instantly gets access to like we were saying maybe tens maybe even hundreds of applications but again, we no longer have the convenience of just doing this across a few desktops. We're now doing this across hundreds or thousands of desktops. So if we look to this, the core approach, right? we simply need to provision applications and we need to be able to isolate them by exception. We'll talk about that here in just a minute and that's a new feature of app volumes. And we also need to be able to use MSI's installers side by side as needed where that's going to be the best way to install the application. Then we need to be able to deliver them in real time and at scale. And we have to be able to do it and have less app stacks, less points of configuration moving forward. And then lastly, we need to be able to manage them in one way. We need to be able to ensure that the settings and configurations are consistent and that will allow us to enable agility on a go forward. So let's take a step back for those of you that aren't already familiar with app volumes. See, inside of a traditional model over here on the left hand side, we've got you know, our network, we've got our server, we've got our storage. Right here is our ESXi, right? So we've got VMware living here. And then we've got our operating system, right? Well, in most cases, in this instance, that would be Windows. And then you've got your data and your files and things the users are creating. And then you've got the applications that are installed on that system, right? So see, the application is actually installed directly on the system and the data and the files live directly on the system as well. With a real-time app model, we're putting another layer of abstraction. Just like we abstracted the operating system and the hardware together. Now what we're doing is we're abstracting the applications. So you see this app container that contains this stack of applications, right? And this app stack would be, you know, Office and Adobe. Another one might be Java and Visual Studio. Another one might be, uh, um, you know, maybe Adobe or, or, or something like that for, for marketing purposes. They're not going directly to the operating system they're going directly connected into app volumes. App volumes then creates the abstraction down to the operating system. And it also allows us to persist our user changes more efficiently. So you see the application itself is moving up one logical tier as well as the disks and things like that that the users are housing their changes on. So what's new inside of app volumes three? 
So inside of App Volumes 3, we've got some really cool stuff. One of my favorites is the new feature called App Toggle. So what does App Toggle do? App Toggle effectively allows us to package a whole bunch of applications inside of one app stack. Like we saw in the previous slide, you might have Office and, and uh, uh, you know, internet browsers, and, and you may have uh, you know, Adobe, you might have uh, uh, PowerPoint, you know, any number of things. Not every user needs that, but at the same time, we don't need to create yet a whole nother stack just for another level of user specificity. What we can do is simply toggle on or off certain applications. So that allows us to say, well, this user gets everything except he doesn't get Photoshop. Okay, simply toggle that off. And now App Toggle allows us to deliver more efficiently and in a more uniformed way. App Capture with App Isolation is also another really interesting feature. It allows us to start to build our own app stack from an application itself. So let's say we find an application that everybody's using. We can go ahead and spin that up and capture that application in its native form without having to necessarily go and build an app stack and then bring the application in. If we then want to merge that application into an existing stack of applications, that's where app isolation comes in handy. Some applications don't necessarily play well with others. Some have different dependencies. They might require different things inside of the operating system. So app isolation will compare the binary file for that application with everything else inside of that application stack. And if there's a contradiction or a conflict, then it can go ahead and isolate that using basically the same type of technology that we've used for years with ThinApp. It effectively creates a private sandbox for that application. So now we've got applications, we can turn them off and on inside with App Toggle. We can capture them as we need. And then once they're captured and merged in, we can isolate them as needed. And all of this, again, remains completely outside of what the user has to deal with. We also have new functions inside of scaling with multiple zones so that we can ensure that we're scaling applications across the infrastructure effectively. And we're integrating with user management inside of Workspace ONE. And we've also unified the administrative console. So all of this is done simply, ubiquitously, and at scale. App Volumes is avail available in three core flavors, standard, advanced, and enterprise. And inside each one, as your infrastructure grows, you'll have access to more and more features. App Volumes really is the way to deliver applications. And I've said it before, end user compute is based upon use case, use case, use case. And if we're basing it on use case, applications are at the hub. They are the core of that use case. And so if you're not determining the most effective way to deliver applications, whether that's local install, whether it's through app volumes, whether it's through thin app, whether it's SaaS based, whatever it is, then you're really falling short of the true vision of what end user compute can be for your deployment. App Volumes helps simplify that, and it allows us to create an integrated and meaningful way to build out our architectures going forward so that they're flexible, they're scalable, and they're highly performant. Thanks again for taking time with me today. Hopefully, you found this information valuable as always. I look forward to talking to you again soon, and until then, be sure to reach out to your local engineering and sales teams for more information on these fantastic products and so much more. And be sure to check out the playlists here for more content regarding end user compute, software defined data center, mobility, storage, and software defined networking, and more. And also, be sure to follow me on Twitter for more updates. Thanks again, have a fantastic day, and I look forward to talking to you again really soon.